In this video, I want to talk a little bit about two functions primarily, group by and summarize. So we're going to use these functions whenever we want to take a data set and summarize it in some particular way. We've already used summarize a couple of times when we wanted to calculate a data frame that had mean values or standard deviations, but we've used it over the entire data set. Um, and so we end up with one row for that entire data set. What we're going to do now is show you how you can get summaries for individual groups within that data set. So we're going to start with the mammal life histories data that we've used for other examples in this data manipulation series. And um, so we're going to load the tidyverse and read in the data, I'll correcting for the um, missing value types and making sure that the references column comes in the correct way. And then we're going to pull up the, uh, uh, fix the names so that we can use those names directly. Those are all steps that we did before. So summarize is a dplyr verb. So it's going to take, the first argument is always going to be the data frame. And, and then we use it much like mutate in that we're going to be calculating uh, summary statistics across those uh, different values. So uh, for the case of the mean, let's say we want mean mass, we would simply say mean um, mass dot g, um, and we might also want to get the sample size. So that's going to be with the convenience function n. And let's say we also want the standard deviation. Mean and SD are base R functions. They're part of the stats uh, uh, package. And they're very, um, very basic. So let's see what we get when we run that. Uh, oops, I'm getting missing values. Um, that's because I forgot that there are missing, there are some species that have missing values. So um, rather than filter them out, I'm going to use na remove equals true. Actually, this is going to give me the wrong answer, I think. Let's see. Oops, what did I do there? And they remove, oh, it's treated it as a new variable. So what I need to do is move this inside the parentheses. See, I make mistakes too. A lot of mistakes. The only reason I know what I'm doing or that I'm able to spot mistakes so quickly is because I've made thousands of more mistakes than you have. Uh, your turn will come. Now, the problem here is that the sample size is actually uh, still the number of rows in that group, but that's actually not the sample size that's been used to calculate the mean and the standard deviation because those are some missing values. Now, I'm just curious whether n has an argument to remove. It does not. Okay. So to do this correctly, we actually need to filter mlh. Well, let's do this with a pipe. MLH pipe filter. Uh, remember, we do not is dot na mass dot g pipe, and now we can get rid of this one because the pipe is coming in from there. So now, in theory, we don't need this, and we don't need this. There we go. So we're pretty close. I mean, the mean mass has actually not changed at all. Neither has the standard deviation. That's correct, right? Because here we were removing the missing values based on um, well, within the mean and SD functions. Yeah, so they should be the same. But our sample size is now correct. So it's actually a little bit smaller, not much, 
but a little bit smaller, um, indicating that um, we have, yeah, not quite as many observations as we thought we did. So these sorts of small things can trip you up occasionally. All right, so that's given us the mean mass and the standard deviation for the entire data set. But what if we wanted to compare um, orders? So we're interested then in what orders have, uh, what the, the mean mass is by order. So what we would need to do is um, add another step into our pipe. Um, I'm going to do something here just to make it a little easier to read. There's a really handy thing under the code menu called, chup, chup, chup. No, no, code, here it is, re-indent lines. Um, so what that will do is, uh, let's say you've been manipulating some code and you've ended up with something that's maybe not that easy to read. Um, if you do control or command I or code re-indent lines, it'll sort it out for you. Um, assuming you like the kind of indentation that RStudio uses. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add under filter, we're going to add, or add this new function, group by. And again, we're in a pipe, so we don't need to specify the data argument. All we have to do is say which variable we want to group our observations by. And we'll do order, and then we add another pipe. And if you recall, that's control shift M to get that pipe. And there we go. We've got, this also conveniently allows us to count the orders. So we've got um, order and they've been listed alphabetically, which may or may not be all that useful. And we can see we've got a couple missing values here because we've only got one observation of the order Dermoptera. I don't even know what a Dermopteran is, but they're pretty big. They are, they're a kilogram in size. Um, so one thing that it might be fun to do would be to order this table by mean mass in descending order so that we go from the biggest orders to the smallest orders. And we can do that after this point. So we'll do a range and we'll do it by descending order of mean mass. And there we have a nice little table. So the whales, of course, are the biggest. The macroscheliidae, I don't even know what those are. Insectivora, I kind of know the like shrews and things like that, I think. Um, rodents, I know what they are. Rabbits, I know what they are. Kind of know what they are, know what they are. I don't really have no idea what the Canarthra are, or the Folodota, or the Tubula dentata. Tubular teeth. 60 kilograms worth of tubular teeth. Wow. Um, anyway, so you can do various kinds of things. And of course, all of the different manipulations that we've done elsewhere still work. And there's quite a lot of uh, operations on the that are dependent on the context. Um, we can do uh, this list uh, under, you know, question mark in gave us a whole bunch of things where it will pull out very functions that will pull out different things about um, values for the current group uh, or even the, uh, all of the groups, if that's what you want to know about. Um, but those are sort of more complicated things. In essence, you group by, and then you summarize. And that's go and those two together are always going to give you back a tibble. Um, and I think the result, let's see, let's assign this result to orders by mass. And Let's have a look uh, if we do is it a 
grouped df orders by mass. It is not. So the summarize removes the grouping structure that you had put there. And so under different sorts of circumstances, you might want to do um, another group by, for example. Um, and if you do something like a mutate in here, uh, you can also then, like, um, I think, oh, no, we didn't do that. So, um, yeah, so this is the basic usage of group by and summarize. Um, and then, of course, you can create uh, whatever sorts of statistics you would, you would like to have off of those sorts of things.